and go. Hello, I'm Dr. Julie Shell from Bow Bottom Veterinary Hospital, and today I would like to show you how we properly care for an animal who has an esophageal feeding tube. This is beautiful Angel, and she has pretty bad kidney disease, but we're not going to let her go without giving it a try. Basically, what we do is we help her eat. Right now, she sometimes doesn't want to feel like eating. Plus, we also have to give about mm, five or eight, sometimes on some doses, different types of medications, both herbs as well as some Western types of drugs and things like um, appetite stimulants are, are given sometimes, and sometimes anti-nauseants are given. Sometimes an animal needs pain control medicine. And so in order to do that safely, rather than keep opening your mouth and shoving pills in or mixing it in food that the animals don't want to eat anyway, we have an ability to put in a temporary esophageal feeding tube. And what that does is it gets the animal through a really damaging state of disease back to a state of health and they won't feel starving to death. They'll actually have food in their stomach and they'll feel better. And so definitely your veterinarian um, can definitely discuss this with you and determine if your pet is an important candidate for this type of situation and whether or not it's important for your pet to have this type of system instilled. So uh, there are some equipment requirements and I really like these nice, soft, comfortable feeding tubes and there's one size that's a bit bigger for dogs and one size that's smaller for cats. This is what uh, one example looks like out of the tube. Basically, we anesthetize the animal and we use proper nerve blocks and we pass the tube into the esophagus from the outside in. So there's a special way of doing this that we learn in veterinary school and um, we do a lot of it because it's so easily done. And then we secure the tube in with bandaging and a really nice uh, tying technique using special suture um, techniques. And um, Angel is such a good calm dog, so um, we always like to prepare the food ahead of time. I like her to smell the food. Um, it's definitely important to figure out what to feed an, an animal. I have her on a special kidney prescription diet. I've also home cooked recipes for other animals that are kidney based recipes that are very good for animals with certain kidney types of disorders. What we do is we first of all put some um, water into a syringe and we make sure that the tube is working well. We always like to test with about six mils, six cc's of water and what you can do is use the little tube holder. Hi Angel! right on the side of her neck and you undo the lid. There's like a little cap and then you put the water right in there and that is warmed water. It is warm to body temperature. It's important to put both food and water in the, uh, to the animal with uh, at the temperature of the normal body so that it's not too hot or not too cold. And then you basically slowly and gently push the water in. And notice how she doesn't care, like she doesn't mind at all. She just likes being petted during that whole procedure. And that means that, you know, this tube is working well it's so easy to to push all that water in and, and she's not coughing so I know that the tube has not gone into her trachea or into a, a place that it shouldn't be and so I know that that's working well and then I basically replace the cap and as you can see Angel is on IV fluids that's just a temporary thing as well because we put her under anesthesia to insert the, the tube. Next I have prepared the food also it's warm I have used the canned version of the kidney product that's a veterinary product and then I use this special mix master to make the food very very thin it's almost like a soup consistency so that the little chunks and food bits of the vegetables and the meats that are in the food will not clog the the, um, the esophageal feeding tube and so it's easy to suck the appropriate amount and basically I like to give them based on their body weight a certain number of calories per day and I also offer them food like we'll never take the food away from her without offering it first. Like often a dog, even with the feeding tube, will want to eat. So I'll just show a small amount for the demonstration purposes. And so you basically make sure that there's enough um, um, food in there. And I don't like putting air in there, so I make sure that there's no air bubble. I'm just gonna like that as well to keep it cleaner. And I just go right over to her. And same look. I first offer her some food, like sometimes they want to eat it, and it's really nice if they do. You can offer it on your finger, or sometimes you can offer it on um, a little spoon, and some animals like to eat all on their own. So as they get feeling better, I find it's more likely that they will eventually start to want to eat. Um, 
their own. And then you basically push the food in the same way that you did the water. It goes in very nicely and slippery. I also can put my herbs in here and medications. And um, Chinese um, types of medications are used very, very commonly at my practice. And so um, we can mix all of that in the food. And then I replace the lid. And then I also, when I'm finished, like usually she gets about two of these per serving at least. And then I want to um, flush the tube with some water as well, just to make sure that the food is not left in the tube. I don't want the food sitting there because it kind of would become rancid if there's food inside of a, 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 of a silicone tube. So I basically put it right back in. Where's water? Good girl, such a good girl. And she just doesn't even mind. She's just happy to have some food in her stomach and like she's not feeling nauseated at all because we're going slow and the appropriate levels are given. And, and then we um, make sure the bandage is kept clean and dry if it ever gets dirty or if say um, the tube looks like it's moved in position, like we always will remove the bandage and double check it. But yeah, she's a perfect little girl for it. And we've done this many times. And usually I like, once the tube is in, I usually keep it in for at least two weeks. Often I'll, I'll remove it before then or after then if the animals are recovering very nicely. In her case, I'll probably leave it in for about three weeks just to make sure um, it's, it's going to um, give enough um, medications and give enough food to her and get her going. But again, I also will always offer her food on the side. And as they get better and better, we usually offer less and less food through the esophageal tube because they'll want to eat more and more on their own. So if you have any questions, please give us a call at 403-278-1984 or check our website at www.bowbottomvet.com. Thank you very much. Good girl, Angel.